on this show. I interviewed my colleague here at MSNBC, Keith Olbermann, about he and I being used this week by the Fox News Channel as a means for that network to hit back at the White House. Fox this week criticized the White House for inviting Keith and me to attend an off-the-record briefing with the president, given that the White House has also recently criticized Fox, which of course is seen as one of our competitors. Well, the White House, including the president himself, has said in recent days that they will treat Fox essentially as an opposition political outlet rather than a normal news channel. That position was made manifest yesterday when the White House arranged an interview sitting for the executive pay chief, Kenneth Feinberg. The way these things work is that the newsmaker sits in the same chair and talks to the same camera, but every five minutes or so, the interviewer the newsmaker is talking to changes. So it would be NBC interviewing Ken Feinberg for five minutes, then ABC interviewing Ken Feinberg for five minutes, then CBS, then CNN, etc. Well, yesterday, the White House said that Fox would not be among the networks invited to interview Ken Feinberg in one of these round-robin pool interviews. And the other networks came to Fox's defense. They said they would bow out of interviewing Mr. Feinberg themselves unless Fox was included. So Fox was included. Fox has since been trumpeting this as a victory over the White House and as evidence that the media sees Fox as a news station, even if the White House doesn't. Fox is right in that the media generally does treat Fox as a news station, even as the White House says they're not. Is Fox a news station? The answer to that is unrelated to the question of whether and which Fox hosts and correspondents express their opinion about the news. It is possible to express an opinion about the news and still cover the news responsibly. We, the American people, the world's admired democracy, cannot ever again allow ourselves to be misinformed, manipulated, and misled into disastrous foreign adventures. Walter Cronkite's statements of his opinion about the Vietnam War did not negate his authority in delivering the news about that war or about anything else. Today, Bob Schieffer, the venerable host of Face the Nation, sometimes closes out that program with his commentary on the news of the day. That commentary, while it's opinion, doesn't make his audience believe less in Mr. Schieffer's ability to deliver the news and to do so well. It's not even just anchors, even for flinty, hard-nosed reporters like war correspondent Laura Logan at CBS. Uh, the expression of an opinion about the news that reporters cover is frankly sometimes part of covering the news. What kind of a wake-up call do you need to say that you're still at war? And, and so this idea that you can separate the things is just ludicrous. Expressing an opinion about the news does not negate one's status as a news reporter or as a correspondent or as a news anchor. The expression of opinion about the news is not the difference between Fox and the rest of the news media. The difference between Fox and news is that Fox is now actively organizing and promoting a protest movement against the U.S. government. Celebrate with Fox News. This is what we're doing uh, next Wednesday. That was a promo run on Fox in advance of the Tax Day Tea Party protests. I say it was a promo, not an ad, because no one paid Fox to run that. The network produced it themselves, promoting as a network protests against the government and, and helping to organize them both on their website and on air. We want to be with you and your Tea Party. If you have a Tea Party anywhere that we're not covering one of those, email me at glennbeck at foxnews.com. We may cover your Tea Party live on April 15th. In addition to the tax day protests that Fox helped organize in April, they also organized and promoted a protest against the government on the occasion of 9-11, oddly. It was the so-called 9-12 march organized by Mr. Beck, who you've seen here, one of the network's primetime hosts. I launched a project back in March, and it comes together Saturday, September 12th, 9-12. Thousands of people are going to gather in Washington, D.C. and around the nation to stand up for the principles and the values that have made America great. The difference between Fox and news is not that Fox's hired personalities and executives and producers share and express an opinion about the news, that they share an ideology. Opinion has always been a kissing cousin to news, and one man's ideology is another man's objective passion. The difference between Fox and news, the way in which one of these things is not like the other, is that only one of these organizations is organizing anti-government street protests. 
There's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly legal as far as I know. Uh, it just makes Fox an opposition political outlet to the Democratic Party and the Obama White House rather than a normal news channel. The exclamation point was put on that fact today when it was announced that the next round of Americans for Prosperity anti-health reform rallies, which we've highlighted on this show in the past, they will be headlined by Fox host John Stossel. Mr. Stossel is a paid contributor at Fox News. He hosts specials for them, and he's about to start his own primetime hour on their business channel. But not before he tours Arkansas, leading rallies against what our friends at Americans for Prosperity call the dangers of government-forced health care. This is a story that most of the media has gotten wrong so far. By not only defending Fox as if Fox is just a news network that has a right-wing point of view, but by ignoring what Fox does as a network that has nothing to do with the news. It's a free country, and Fox can do what it wants. God, God, God bless them and keep them. Uh, but it would frankly be strange, it would be weird for the White House, for the U.S. government, to treat a group that is organizing protests and rallies against it as if that group is just covering the news. It's not. One of these things is really not like the other. A Tea Party rally in Washington, it was only because Fox News had taken out a full-page ad in the Washington Post telling millions of people that we didn't cover the rally. And that was a lie. And lies should be exposed. And here's something else that should be exposed. Real news organizations, real news organizations, are not supposed to stage events, nor should they promote news events, nor should they hype news events. Otherwise, they lose their ability to be impartial. They're no longer even remotely objective if they do that, nor are they being fair and balanced. Case in point again. Fox News. And that's where we begin photos. This is the pudgy faced anchor, like me, who, by the way, is not a journalist, not like me, who has used his radio show to tell people to go to these rallies. This is the news reporter who says the protesters are, among others, doctors. But wait, here's the best part. This is the producer who tells the crowd when to cheer at a rally. Watch as she raises her arms to get the crowd to hoot and howl on command at a news event. Keyword news. Now, for your viewing pleasure, here it is all together. Fox's Griff Jenkins is there now in Washington, D.C. They're, they're old, they're young, they're black, they're white, they're male, they're female, they're farmers, they're minors, they're doctors. And more. Fox News says the producer in question will be disciplined. As for my request that they apologize for lying about CNN not covering the story, still no apology, though a Fox executive did say I was a sucker. Not quite sure exactly what that means, but I'm still waiting for that apology. Really? 